garrick season now. Um, I'm basically going to show you a trace that we use for throwing live mullet, mackerel if you want, any live bait that you prefer. Very simply, you can either purchase one of the saltwater traces that we do here at uh, Kingfisher. But to make one, and this is my preferred way of doing it, 25 kilo Kingfisher leader line, ring soy 5 -0. old faithful Kendall round, you can use a 6-0, 5-0, 4-0, depending on the size of the bait that you're actually going to be throwing. And simple number three, um, number four power swivel, and a little bead. I'm just going to get my stuff together here quickly, guys. Open the packets. We need two of those. One candle round. One three. The, this one that I'm doing now is going to be rigged for throwing a mullet because it's easiest live bait to come by at the moment. So very simply, you're going to take some nylon. Start with the hook. All I'm going to do is a very simple figure of eight on the nylon. Lubricate, slide down, pull tight, and cut off the tag end. I'm going to make it about a meter in length. I'll just double check myself. There's a meter there, so that's going to be a meter length. Take my ring sui. Because I'm using mullet, I'm going to be using silver hooks and depending on the size of the actual bait that I've got, I'm going to make it. So I'm just going to grab a mullet quickly, not the best mullet, a little frozen one that I've had for a bit of time and I'm just going to get my measurements right there. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is a very simple snell, so I'm just going to go around three, four, five, six, seven times, and back through the eye. Like so. Again, like I said, I'm going to make it a meter in length, so that's where the meter mark is. Attaching the swivel, and again, just three turns, simple figure of eight. Nothing fancy about this knot. Okay. Onto your sinker trace, basically another swivel. Preferably a cone sinker, or if you have to, and the sea is a bit up, a grapnel sinker. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use a normal pair sinker. So I just want to get the measurement, which is basically the same length. There we go, got that there. So I'm just going to use a pair sinker, but a cone sinker is what I recommend you look for. And a cone sinker with a big face. When I talk about the big face, let me just quickly grab one for you. What we're talking about when I say a big face on a cone sinker is this part here. This is reasonably small, you get much bigger ones which are a lot shorter. What happens is that cone sinker will sit in the sand and there's a lot more resistance against it when you're fishing with a live bait. It's very hard to retrieve. Um, it's just one of those features that you need to look for when you're looking for a good live bait sinker. Big face, short body, and you're good to go. Okay, let's just attach this quickly. Again, on the nylon, I'm not clipping. Figure of eight. Slide down. Pull tight, and then we just cut off the tag in there. Okay. 
Now what we do is we take our little bead and we do all of this basically on the beach before we take our live bait out so he doesn't stress too much. This leader line. Swivel. And my little plastic bead. And again, just attaching it, figure of eight. Okay, so basically, if you had to look at it, this is what the trace is going to look like. end of the day. The sink is the same length as your bait once your bait is attached and it's free running. It's a running trace. So when the Gary picks it up, you free spool, let him go, let him mouth the bait, give it a couple of seconds and he'll go again. When he goes again, set the hooks. Okay. What we do is underneath our Imagine this being your live uh, mullet that's moving around. Take a wet cloth, it's easier to hold them like that and you don't take the slime or the scales off of them. Just take your hook. Underneath, basically, you just want to take off those bottom scales. Just to make a little uh, mark in it. So you go underneath and not deep into the stomach. You're just going under the skin, between those two little um, flaps there. And you basically just pull him out. Slide him around and slide him underneath. So he sits over there, underneath those two little peck fins over there. I can call it that. This one, which is your holding one, you need to actually stick in quite deep. There's a whole set of spikes or bones that actually run down this way. So what you want to do is you can either stick a toothpick underneath it if you want, but a mullet is quite a hardy fish, so don't worry about that too much and you actually want to go deep into it okay that is what actually holds it that hook there this hook sits nice proud underneath it's a very simple bait when it comes to throwing and that's what it's going to look like when you actually throw it so yeah unfortunately when you throw it, the mullet tends to do this in the wind and that would be my live mullet swimming around, enjoying his day. Bloop, 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 bloop. Garrick's gonna come along, eats head first, hence this hook over here, and make sure that hook is extremely sharp. Um, um, Garrick's gonna eat it, bloop, bloop, bloop. Swims off, give him a couple of seconds, swims off again, and hit. And that's why we use this. So that when he swims off, and he normally takes about 10 meters or so, five meters, He'll mouth and mouth it depending on the size of the bait and swims down the second time, hit, and you should have the garrick down that area. And that's your bait for a garrick with a live throw bait. If you want to make a trace like that and you don't have time at home, pre-made ones are available, saltwater sports trace. Just be very careful, you get the throw bait one, which is the double hook that you see here, or you get the slide one. Okay, that's the slide one, that's the throw bait one. <laughs>